Yo, what's up guys, it's Suraj from Tech Devoted and in this episode, we are taking a look at the Wiltrox 85mm f1.8, a lens that is designed for Sony full frame. As with any other FE lens, this lens also works on APS-C and I actually did all my testing using a Sony A6300, so keep that in mind. This is a very interesting lens for a couple of reasons. It is Wiltrox's first lens or well, one of their first lenses. Uh, they are well known for their lighting gear and speed boosters, but when it comes to glass, this is pretty much their first attempt. This lens, that I'm, this unit that I'm holding was sent to me by Wiltrox in May uh, for review, not required to say anything nice about it by the way, no strings attached. Uh, but this is a semi-automatic lens, meaning it does have electronics on the rear to show you EXIF data, but that's about it. It does not have autofocus. Now, that said, Wiltrox have since uh, launched an autofocus variant of the same lens. When I received this lens in May, I had no knowledge of this autofocus vari variant that was you know, being made. I think it came out a couple of weeks back. And I think it's a little strange that a company would make an autofocus variant and a manual focus variant of the same lens. I mean, I've never seen a manufacturer do that before. Not like it's a bad thing, but it's just a little new to me. Obviously that lens has autofocus, this one does not. Uh, the direct result of that is that this one has a mechanical focus ring, that one uh, has a fly-by-wire -wire focus system. Optically, on paper, they're both the same. Uh, this one also looks way cooler in my opinion. The autofocus variant just looks extremely, you know, plain. Uh, depending on where you look, the manual variant will run you anywhere between $200 and $300. The Amazon US store literally has this lens listed for three different prices. I don't know what's going on. Uh, the autofocus variant, on the other hand, will run you about $380. The, the pricing for that lens seems to be pretty consistent across different stores. Okay, that was a lot of information. Now that the basics are out of the way, let's talk about other things such as the build and the image quality. One thing I've noticed common among all the Chinese lenses I've tried till date, whether that's Seven Artisans, Neva or Mikey, it is that they all offer excellent build quality and that just seems to be the norm. Same holds true for the Wiltrox 85 as it's built completely out of metal and really it's right up there with the top dogs such as Sony G Master or even Zeiss in terms of build quality. The little badge and the focus chart on the lens together add to it and make it look even more G Master-esque. The lens weighs around 650 grams so on an APS-C body it will be front heavy. It has a 72mm filter thread and it does come with a hood in the box. As I've already stated, it's got electronic connections along with a micro USB port on the rear. Uh, the micro USB port is there for software updates, so I think that's pretty awesome. It's good to see that Wiltrox isn't just making the product and forgetting about it. They do want to push software updates over time and improve the lens over time. Oh, also before I forget, and you've probably seen it already, but the front lens element on this lens looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, just, just wanted to get that out of the way. 85mm on APS-C is about a 130mm full frame equivalent, a focal length that is very new to me. I typically shoot on a 24mm full frame equivalent or a 50mm full frame equivalent since video is what I mostly do. In my personal opinion, with an 85 you can find more use for stills than you can for video. This is an amazing portrait lens. Compression is the name of the game. 85mm at 1.8 is just something else. Some might even call it a bit artificial looking. Apart from portraits, I also think it's great for architecture, street, wildlife, things like that. In my testing, I mainly shot portraits and street. Now, I generally shoot on autofocus lenses only, so shooting on this lens was a bit of a new experience, uh, not necessarily a bad thing, especially because I think this lens has probably the best focus ring I've tried on any lens so far. It is a mechanical focus ring, so you do get hard stops, and there's even a focus chart to guide you. The focus throw is about a complete 180 degree, making it fairly easy and accurate to work with. The lens does a great job image quality wise too. I shot most of what I shot wide open at 1.8 and I'm extremely happy with how the photos turned out. The image is quite sharp, not as sharp as maybe Sigma lenses, but definitely plenty sharp. I'll leave a link to the unedited photos in the description if you'd like to pixel peep for yourself. There is a bit of chromatic aberration for sure in high contrast lighting, but again, 
I think it's really not that bad. It's maybe a little worse than Sigma or Sony glass, but it's not image damaging bad. It's mostly gone when you stop down to 2.8 or 4. And even at 1.8, it's easily fixable in post. Vignetting is fairly pronounced wide open. At f2, it's a lot better. And at 2.8, it's completely gone. Speaking of video, again, 85 is not the focal length that I would usually reach out to. For YouTube videos like this, I typically use a wider lens and one that has autofocus. That said, I can see myself using it for the occasional b-roll shot if I need to get an extremely compressed background. Obviously, it's not ideal for handheld unless you're doing slow motion, there's just too much shake, nor is it suitable for gimbal use. In my eyes, it's more of a tripod use type of lens and since the focus ring is so good, racking focus is also a pleasant experience. Now the only issue I've had with this lens so far, and this is not even to do with image quality, I think it's got to do with the electronics. So uh, when I turn on the camera, sometimes the lens does not get detected by the camera. So, you know, I would not be able to change the aperture. Basically, there is a lack of communication between the lens and the camera. Now, to be fair, this has only happened two times so far in my usage. So I don't think it's that big of a deal. Plus, I do believe it can be fixed via a firmware update. So I hope Wiltrox is aware of the issue and working towards it. But yeah, it's not that big of a deal, uh, but I thought it was still worth mentioning. So should you buy this lens? If you're talking 85 millimeter prime, this is one of the most inexpensive options for the E-mount system. The only other 85 mm in the same price range is the Samyang 85 millimeter 1.4, whereas the Sony and the Zeiss are all at least twice as expensive. This lens won't be as sharp as the $1,700 G Master lens, but it's still quite good for the money. So if you know you want an 85 and are on a budget, I think this is a great lens to get, especially if you can get it for $200. For $200, it might even be the cheapest good lens in the history of FE lenses. If you're unable to find it that cheap and can only find it for $300, I would encourage you to spend a little extra and get the autofocus variant unless you want that mechanical focus ring and know that you will never use autofocus. So that's about it for this review. I want to give a massive, massive shout out to my good friend Dinesh for helping me film the B-roll for this one. Definitely check out his Instagram if you want to see good photography as well as hear opinions on football. I'll definitely leave it, uh, leave his Instagram linked below. If you enjoyed watching this video or if you found it helpful, give it a like. If you did not, vote it down. Let me know in the comments why you didn't like it. Uh, consider using my affiliate links to make your purchase if you're going to be making it. Uh, it gives me a kickback at no extra cost to you. If you're new around here, consider subscribing. It's been Suraj. Thanks so much for watching. Take it easy and stay devoted.